Welcome to Mid-Level Adventurers, a podcast where non-experts talk about the things they love. I'm Jared Jehoda, and with me for this first series is my co-host, Matt Morris. Hey everyone, it's Matt Morris. During this series of podcasts, we have been discussing various points of how we play Dungeons & Dragons, sharing our stories, our favorites, and our love for the game. But what happens when we have a question? When we need some clarification, or when we need a little bit more explanation than just the rules as written, where do we go? What kind of content creators really help us? This week, we're going to share some of our favorite YouTube resources with you. Mm -hmm. So that leads us right in, Matt. What are some of your favorite YouTube channels to go to for d and I've been looking forward to this episode because I wanted to share some of the, the favorites of mine. When I fell into getting back into D&D at the beginning of quarantine, I, I really fell hard and was watching a lot of YouTube channels and sort of searching for things that I like. So the ones that I really sort of like found that I had an affinity for are as follows. The first one that I think that I sort of found I took a liking to would be Taking 20. And that's taking spelled out and then 20 is a number. Right. All one word. But taking 20. That guy, oh gosh, I think his name's Cody. I probably should have uh, looked up his name for this. <laughs> he does some really fun episodes. He kind of like jokes about the fact that some of them are a little bit clickbaity, right? You know, because that's as a YouTube creator, I'm sure you have to make things a little bit interesting for people to search you out. Got to get that algorithm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But he, you know, he like he does some fun episodes, which are, you know, he likes to break down rules that he thinks are either like really ineffective and some suggestions on how to make them better or things that he thinks really work really well and suggestions that you should take if you're starting out as a player. He just seems pretty down to earth, fun guy. He's got a lot of stuff. I don't know. I, I just highly, I highly recommend him taking 20. Cody, I think is his name again. Mm -hmm. Another another favorite of mine. I'll try to limit myself to to at least two for now. But um, Nerdarchy. Have you heard of these guys? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, they are. They're a bit older, and I don't mean that in any disrespect. I mean that in the highest praise because they have been playing for quite some time, and they they know a lot. They just they just know a lot, and they are currently giving videos on Five E. Yep. And if you look back at some of it, like on their channel. They've come a long way in a short time, right? I think some of their early stuff, and I think even they would admit they were they were learning, you know, about content creation and all that. They've come a long way. Those are probably my top two. You know, there are a couple other ones. I'll let you dive right in. I'm sure we'll have some crossover right there. All right. Well, yes, uh, Nerdarchy was a channel I was going to mention. Oh, good. If I'm looking for lore information to kind of give a background on characters or monsters or something like that, Jordan makes amazing work, and it's Jordan with the P-H, ah. so it's J-O-R-D-P-H-A-N, Jord Fan. Ah, okay. But he makes amazing videos, and some of it's like a regurgitation of the Forgotten Realms wiki or whatever, but he does mm -hmm. amazing in-depth research into his videos, and I think they're really great. Nice. I also use WebDM. Yeah. Yeah, the guys on WebDM, James and Pruitt. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They have a great chemistry, and I like watching them. Even if a particular episode does not reach out and grab my interest, I like watching it to hear their chemistry go back and forth. I find them very amusing. And they're knowledgeable. They've been playing for 30 years, 40 years. I don't know. They might get mad if I say 40 years and they're like 35. I don't actually know how old they are. Also, Critical Role has put out multiple series that help new people come into the game, which shouldn't be too surprising. There is both a player version and a DM-orientated version. Critical Role's Handbook or Helper is designed to get new players in and explain the very basics of their characters, like level one character stuff. Each member of the cast comes through and goes over class that they like or a class that they've played. Here's all the stuff you need to play a rogue from Liam O'Brien. Here's uh, Talos and Jaffe talking about fighters uh, or warlocks or whatever the case may be. It's a really great series and I really like it. And also DM Tips, which was started back when they were on Geek and Sundry as part of that channel. Okay. The first series is Matt just giving advice uh, in his very like patented, friendly style, Matt Mercer kind of way, which I respond to really well. Um, but then after that, in like later seasons, he actually swapped off and like Satine Phoenix did it for a while. And ah. I think someone else did it for a while. The point was to give other DMs and GMs a chance to showcase their style, how they would answer a thing, how they do their stuff. To show that there is no one right way. You find what works for you and go for it. And I really like that. Yep. And I cannot move forward in this episode without mentioning Joe Cat. Yes! Because Joe Cat has an entire series called The Crap Guide to D&D. Yes! That is entertaining, informative, very hilarious, and very tongue-in-cheek. 
Yes. You can tell it is made by someone who loves it, but understands how utterly ridiculous Dungeons and Dragons is. Because it is. Let's be honest. We love it. It's utterly insane. Yeah. So yes, Joe Cat. That's J-O-C-A-T. One word. Go on YouTube and look at Crap Guide to D&D. It goes yes. over feats and various other things. I think he's also started to do backgrounds and character sheets and all this other stuff. So he's really like expanding on the content because it's hilarious. Yes. I'm glad you mentioned that. I think you were the one to, to recommend me watching that. And it is very hilarious. If you've got any background at all, if you've got no background at all, he does very much make fun of all things D&D, but it comes from like a, a special place of someone who loves the game, I think. So. Oh, yeah. Highly recommend. Yeah, I'm glad you mentioned that. Actually, as like us, a kind of a runner up to a fun channel just for like informative, but also entertaining. Z Bashu. You heard of him? No. He does something, a series called The Animated Spellbook. Oh, yes. Yes, I do know this. Yeah, this is good. Yeah, the channel is under Z, so Z E E space B A S H E W Bashu. But yes, he does animated spellbook, and he, as far as I know, animates his own stuff and does voiceovers for it. And it is normally he sort of he sort of recounts episodes from maybe games he's played or experiences he, he's had. But it's meant to just highlight uh, maybe a cantrip or spell or just any other little thing in, in DD that he finds intriguing, and as it relates to maybe some some experience he's had in a game. So it's quite fun, especially the animations. So I highly recommend that. It's an entertaining and also informative. One more that I'll just throw out really quickly is WASD20. Mm. That's W-A-S-D-2-0. He's got a variety of content. I actually really like his map making tutorials and map making videos. Nice. But he goes over every new bit of D&D content that comes out and a lot of other things. He's a really great creator. And I actually use a lot of his techniques in making my own world maps. Nice. Very nice. I need to look that one up, actually. It's one that I don't know. How about, I, I think you know these guys. Uh, I think we should give a shout out to Dungeon Dudes. Oh, sure. Yeah. As a couple of like pretty down to earth guys that are just trying to be informative. They are very stoic in their presentation, I thought. Yes, they are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I don't know if it's that's just who they are or if it's just their bit that they decided to go with. Either way, it works. Yeah, it does. Yeah, yeah. They're not doing any sort of cheap tricks, right, for, for, for views. They're just kind of straightforward as, as I find. Yeah, and I appreciate that. Yeah, definitely. Uh, in a similar way to WebDM. Well, to be fair, WebDM does kind of like, they do try to put a little extra in the production value these days, right? And like, you know, skits at the beginning of the the episode and that kind of thing. I would say maybe Dungeon Dudes as a contrast don't necessarily do that. Mm -hmm. But they are pretty straightforward about like, hey, this is our opinion. This may not, you know, like you may not agree with everything. Right. There's a couple too that I've checked out that are maybe a little more specific to DMs, but I find that they have some great, just a wealth of knowledge for just the, you know, even the average player, one of which is Matthew Coville. Oh, of course. Yeah. And I think a lot of his stuff is a little bit more geared toward DMers. Yeah. It, it, I would say that Matt Coville's stuff is definitely more DM orientated. Yeah, but I just find he's got a good head on his shoulders for like, you know, he's got pretty good insight into interpretation of rules and such. And I haven't watched him in depth, but the stuff I've seen of him, I'm pretty captivated with, you know, sort of his information that he presents. Yeah, and he's a full-on content creator. He has created a variety of world books and source books, and he's written all kinds of modules. And he's definitely done stuff with Critical Role in terms of either... I think he was one of the co-writers on the Critical Role comic book, but I'm not 100% sure off that off the top of my head. He's got a little claim for fame in the video game world, too, which... Mm -hmm. Definitely heavy-handed in the writing. I feel like he breaks things down in a pretty easy-to-digest way for people that are both players and DMs alike. I would agree. And another one on the DM scale that I've I've looked into a bit just for his take on breaking down the rules and such is the DM layer. You heard of this guy? No, I do not know him. He's got a very unique presentation on camera. But yeah, he just kind of has a lot of tips for people that are DMers, uh, a lot of I like how like, you keep saying DMers instead DMers, of DMers. DMers, yeah. I've coined that today. That's that's me. It's new. Very cool. How about you? Got any that we've left out? There are so many D&D related or D&D specific channels on YouTube that we could be here all day talking about them. We're just throwing out some highlights of ones that we go back to more often than not. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A fun little segment we have here on Middle Level Adventurers is our Tavern Corner, where we talk about what we are imbibing tonight. And so, Matt, I throw it to you first. What are you imbibing this evening? Tonight, I am imbibing 
a stout. So unlike me, I know. I went to my old favorite Harlem Ops again, and I picked up a uh, crawler of a stout from Finback Brewing, another local New York State brewing company. Mm. They're out on Long Island. Don't quote me on that. I hope I'm right. And anyway, tonight I'm having, it's called One Wink Stout, and mm. it is a stout that is, apparently they've added maple flavoring to it. And it's, huh. It's very light. It's not. It's not super strong. In fact, I had one the other night that was a similar stout with some maple, but it was much heavier and syrupier, more syrupy. Does the maple kind of cut out some of the bitter? Yeah, 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 yeah. Hmm. It's it's pre- it's pretty light actually, all things considered, for a stout. It's like a nine percent beer, so it's you know it's definitely not light on the alcohol, but yeah, it's not it's not too much really. It's got that nice season drinking, but flavor packed flavor packed stout. Kind of an odd choice maybe for the summer, but. I'm an oddball, so how about you? <laughs> what are you What are you imbibing tonight? Well, tonight I went a little larger in terms of production, but still local to New York. I've been to the brewery. It is the Brooklyn Brewery. Yeah. I am drinking their Oktoberfest. Oh, nice. Because I saw it out and I'm like, well, it's that time of year, I guess. It is. It actually is, yeah. Yeah. I actually really like an Oktoberfest. Ever since I first had them in Germany, I'm like, this is an amazing style of beer, so... I like that you threw that out there. I'm very jealous that you got to have actual Oktoberfest beers in Germany. It was a lot of fun. The beer from Brooklyn Brewery is also very good. It's it's a good <laughs> homage and kind of like honoring the traditional kind of things. I wouldn't say it's a like exact traditional remake or whatever, but it's definitely honoring Oktoberfest. Yeah. It's their seasonal. And I don't know if you've ever been to the Brooklyn Brewery. I have. Okay. So then you've heard the how they got open story, which is pretty mm-hmm. amazing. Yes, yes, yes. I think you told me. Yeah, which for those who do not know, you go to the Brooklyn Brewery, you take the tour, they will tell you the story about how the brewery got started. And it's a funny story that includes the mob. And that's all I'm going to say, because I don't want to ruin it for anybody. They're Oktoberfest, I'm sure. I haven't, I don't know if I've had it recently, but I have no doubts that it's very enjoyable. Yeah, it's smooth and it goes down very cleanly. There's a slight bitterness on the aftertaste, but Mm -hmm. it's not bad. I'll have to check it out. I'll have to look for it next time. That has been the Tavern Corner, and this has been what we're imbibing tonight. What about, other than YouTube, what about some peer-to-peer message boards, Reddits, or anything like that? I've said previously that I have used the Dungeon Master subreddit and the Homebrew subreddit a lot. I'm also part of a couple of Discord groups that have a lot of players and DMs. And everybody kind of shares tips and tricks and information and stuff like that, um, which I find really valuable to get that kind of like peer interaction done instead of just like professional people who do these things. But if you do want like professional advice, then Sage Advice is a great archive of all the responses you could ever want because they've gone through and actually collated all of Chris Perkins and Jeremy Crawford's Twitter responses to game questions. Oh, yeah, that's a good source, actually. I've, I've definitely heard of that. You know, I, I heed the advice of a lot of things you've thrown at me, too, so... <laughs> you do that at your own risk, my friend. Ah, well, it bears repeating, though. Like, you know, you, you've offered some great advice, and to I think our recommendations are the same, I guess is what I'm saying. <laughs> do you follow any other kind of, like, social media channels that throw out advice or offer you help? Twitter, Instagram, I'm not huge on those platforms. I'm kind of trying to be between this and Newly Forged to kind of be a little bit more, more knowledgeable, yeah. perhaps. Yeah, proactive, maybe. Proactive. I like that. I follow, like, Matt Mercer, Critical Role cast, Jeremy Crawford, Chris Perkins, Satine Phoenix. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Content creators in that realm. In a similar vein, I'm pretty bad at the social meds. I'm just going to use all sorts of abreaves today, apparently. <laughs> um, but I've been trying to get better now that we're doing this and we're doing Newly Forged. But at the moment, no, I'm pretty inactive, actually. So that's something, you know, I think that's something I'd like to, to get into, something I'd like to improve upon. Mm-hmm. I've done a lot of the research and the watching and the, and the channel following for the YouTube content creators, but um, haven't touched into the other platforms yet. Yeah, I'm not huge into using social media in terms of following people or whatever, but I have seen a few things pop up in my feed that have inspired things in games that I've played. There's a few accounts that come up with like random scenario 645, a giant piece of bread is just floating on the middle of the road. Why? 
And that's kind of like the prompt. Ah. And you build from there. You're like, oh, this is the bit of inspiration I needed. Why would a piece of bread be floating? Maybe an invisible creature is like holding it up because they can't speak. They're muted, but they're intelligent enough to know that they need help. So they're mm. waving this piece of bread that they found. Yeah. You know, like whatever. It could be anything. It's pretty fun. I think I would definitely need that if I was, you know, trying to, to come up with new ideas all the time. Any other tips or recommendations in terms of a channel you go to or a streamer that you might find influential or a discord group or anything like that that you are a part of that you really want to showcase here well i think the beauty of youtube is that there are so many and if you search around enough even starting with some of the ones we recommended if you search through their channel you're going to find they're even going to have recommendations for other channels i think that they were inspired by or uh, are, are friends of that kind of thing so it helps you expand that that pool of knowledge and then you'll just eventually find the ones that you like to watch that you enjoy i don't think every one of them is for everyone necessarily i think you gotta watch a little bit of them to find out what's for you but and that's that's me i like to kind of watch the videos you know it's which is funny because we're on a podcast but uh, <laughs> I've, I've ventured less into the podcast in that in that realm than i have on on the youtubes but yeah maybe maybe youtube's not your thing maybe you want just some something in the background some some soothing voices like uh, jared and i have for podcast <laughs> In which case, I'm sure there are a plethora of those too, which maybe in a future episode we'll do some shout outs to some fellow podcasters that do D&D content. I am sure there are a plethora that we have no idea exist. Yes, there are so many. There are definitely a lot of like actual play podcasts and YouTube channels and that kind of stuff too. Yes. Which we have not touched too much on that. Well, maybe that's for another episode too. We've got a we got a friend playing with us in Newly Forts that actually has a podcast for uh, for actual play. Yes, she does. Uh, Amber Tenajaya, she is on a podcast called Story Dice Friends Time. Yeah, it's very good. Uh, they've been playing together for a little bit, so they've got the you know sort of com- camaraderie mm-hmm. together, which is important. And uh, they put a lot into the production value, as we do. They've got some music intro to the episodes. It's very nice. I like it. Yeah, I think it's really good, actually. I wish I was more tech-savvy so I could do fun things like they have. Uh, We'll get there. We're doing a slightly different format. They're doing an actual gameplay. We're just talking about stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. To each their own, right? And that's the thing. Like, find what find what you like. If you want to listen to podcasts, if you don't need to see the visuals, maybe you need to do other things for listening to something, that's fantastic. We could talk about YouTube. We could talk about podcasters, Twitch streamers. We could talk about people who draw art, mm-hmm. people who just do cosplay. There are so many avenues of D&D fandom and appreciation and content creation that you just can't go wrong in any of them, really. Just find what ones you like and start looking into it, I guess. Yeah, yeah. It's kind of a rabbit hole, right? You'll you'll start to, um, if you're interested, you'll start to just sort of keep going, I think. That's what happened to me, at least. I, uh, I do have one recommendation, though. And it is a live stream channel. It's called Total Party Chill. Hmm. Uh, I found them because I was watching the Wormwood Twitch stream and they raided Total Party Chill right at the beginning of quarantine. Nice. The guy who is running the Twitch stream named Devin was so charismatic and so engaging. And he was just going through a book that had been released and talking about stuff. And we were building a settlement, I think is what it was. So it's like, all right, we're going to roll these dice to determine how we build our city here. And Mm -hmm. he was just captivating. So I I got gifted a subscription. So I kept going back. They do trivias almost every Thursday. They almost always have a giveaway on every time they do a stream. They are fantastic. And the entire cast, because they are a live play show, for weeks they didn't really have that capability because of COVID. Sure. But it's a fantastic community. Their Discord is very active and you can ask questions. They have games that you can play on there. There's like a a text-based role-playing game going on right now that's pretty crazy. So I've got one actually that a friend brought up to me that I should should give a shout out to. I personally haven't watched yet, so it's on the list because he has he has high praise for it. But it's called Me, Myself, and Die. Oh, I'm unfamiliar. Yeah, it's another uh, a streamed game apparently, and he he gives it the highest praise. He says it's up there with if you enjoy things like Critical Role, you should enjoy this. So very cool. It's on the it's on the list. I just finally found the first episode of the D and D with Drag Queens. Oh, I finally yeah. found it online. Uh, it is called Dungeons and Drag Queens. It's really good. I, I'm only partway through the first episode right now, but they play the game as like an improv show in a drag club, essentially. So there's people in the audience <laughs> drinking. There's a giant oversized D20 that like the audience rolls. 
at least in the first episode, the intro is kind of long because there's like three minutes of the MC queen being like, okay, this is what Dungeons and Dragons is. This is how this is going to work tonight. Which, you know, I guess you need if you're in the audience and you think you're going to see like a cabaret show, but you're not going to see a cabaret show. You're going to see a D&D game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But then there's a long, fairly quiet intro where all the queens come out and do their like intro thing, which I'm sure in the moment and the venue was fantastic and fun and a joy. But just watching it be kind of quiet on screen for like five minutes is kind of difficult. Mm, yeah. And then after that, there's the lore intro. The lore intro was amazing. It was so good uh, with like maps and graphics and stuff. That was fantastic. It was so cool and very rich in lore. And you just get a lot of respect for uh, the people who have created this show based on this. They just play the game and have fun with it being drag queens. It's amazing. I need to check this out. In fact, I'm, I'm kind of disappointed in myself that I haven't checked it out since the last time you mentioned it. <laughs> <laughs> but there are so many like actual play games or whatever that we could be here all day. And some of them use the mechanic where like you can pay bits or donate in order to get like name an NPC or give DM powers to the players for two minutes or whatever. Things that can kind of influence the game, but it's all in the kind of style you want to play. If you're, you're going for like the high level audience interaction, then that stuff is really great. Mm -hmm. If you want to just showcase the game that you play or your play style, that can be a little bit of a roadblock. Yeah, sometimes I I think it might be interesting to pick up on some of these games that are not in the spotlight necessarily because it might be a good representation of what a good home game could be. Yeah. You can go on Twitch at any time and just click on the D&D &D tab and mm -hmm. there'll be dozens of games up and some people are just world building and other people are just playing their home game for anybody who wants to pop in and watch. Check in some of those games that have like one viewer or five viewers. Yeah. See what like quote unquote real table gameplay is like. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, no, find what you like. You may not like everything, and that's not right or wrong, you know? You may love Critical Role. You may hate it. I hope you don't hate it, but, like, it's nothing wrong, I guess, without liking it. Hey, you know, it's not for everybody, man. Yeah, find what you like. There's so much out there right now, and I'm sure the market is inundated right now, because I'm, so, I'm sure so many people are, are having more time due to COVID to put, put some things out there, which is, is not a bad thing. It just means there's more opportunities for you to find something interesting. Well, that is how we started this podcast and Newly Forged. Yeah, we're all in this together. I don't view this as competition. It's just about having fun and playing a game. And if people want to share that, go for it. Yeah, that's, the, I think, the beauty, too, of watching, like, real play games is that, like, every game should be and would be unique and interesting. And you, maybe you'll find a story you really are captivated by. Mm -hmm. It could be anything, though. There's so many, like, just, just search. That's probably the biggest takeaway from this episode, right? Just go out there and look. We've given you some starting points, some, you know, places to, to begin your search and... Yeah, and just fall down the rabbit hole, see where you land. Yeah. Matt, before we close out here, do you have anything else you'd like to wrap up for this episode? I think my big takeaway would just be, if you need some starting points, take some of the things we've recommended, but just find what works for you, what you enjoy to listen to. Yeah, definitely check out some of the creators we've mentioned tonight. Check out Jordan, where the PH is silent. Check out Nerdarchy. Check out Joe Cat. Check out Critical Role's DM Tips and Handbook or Helper. Mm -hmm. Check out Waz D20. Taking 20. Taking 20. Take a look at them. They've got lots of experience. If nothing else, if you want to learn something while also being entertained, I think they're excellent places to start. Yeah, and if nothing else, it will give you ideas on maybe what kind of character you want to play or what kind of DM you want to be or what kind of game you want to play in. Mm -hmm. The choices are limitless and the world is out there. And that's what we're all about here on Mid-Level Adventurers. Yes, very true. And thank you all for joining us on this adventure. Make sure to join us on our next podcast where we will talk about a subject that I love, Dungeon Mastering. Mm. And remember to check out our friend and the composer of all the music we use here on Mid-Level Adventurers, John D. Ivy on SoundCloud.com. And remember to follow us on Twitter and Instagram at MidLVLAdventure. Give us a tweet, give us a tag, say hi. And please check out our website on Wix at MidLevelAdventurer.Wixsite.com. And feel free to email us at midleveladventurers at gmail.com. And as always, I'm Jared Jehoda. And I'm Matt Morris. Mind the traps and keep adventuring.